Hi, I have my monster PG Keen. Cheers. Clink. I am so happy today I am going to be showing you how to make website buttons, blinkies, blingies, <laughs> buttons, yes, PNGs, transparents, all the like fun little things that you can add on your website. Like you don't even need crazy coding knowledge, you kind of just need to know how to add it an image and then you can add in any one of these and any one of them would spice up and add so much more personality to your website. I'm actually also going to be showing you a couple different ways to do each. So I think that's going to be really cool if one way doesn't work for you or is kind of like hard for you to do, you can try another way and there should be something for everybody, which is really, really cool. Um, really quick, in case you're like really new to the indie web, I know a couple people were asking what certain like buttons were called and stuff like that. The website button is this one. This is my website button. I made it on paint and it is to typically used to link to other websites, you know, sometimes within a web ring. So you can go from like website to website to website and people will have them on their site showing like their favorite websites, their internet neighbors, web ring members, which I think is so, so, so cool. It's just like a way to like, we just support each other, help keep the indie web alive. Oh my gosh, you're so stinking cute. I think Noodles wants to say hi. There's also Blinkies with a K. <laughs> They're typically just like a random little blip about yourself you know like coffee lover morning lover i hate winter i love pugs whatever you want to put he just has to say hello what do you have to say for yourself noodles huh i forgot to put lip gloss on i just noticed <laughs> i love the way lip gloss looks whenever the light hits it it's so fun anyways um blinkies yes yeah, so you could just put whatever you want honestly <laughs> which is really really fun i love little like just any way to add personality and make things your own and kind of like an easy way for people to get to know you i love looking at like when people have a graphics garden and they have tons like i'll put examples from my two favorite websites and also my internet neighbors oh my gosh i love their website so much and um i'm so honored that they would put me on their site as well but i just i love that you can like clearly see like Motika.club. They have theirs and they love cats and winter and music and then the same kind of for Love Star K. They also love cats and winter and music and Love Star K also loves like Pusheen and purple. Um, I can't think of many other of the Blinkies at the top of my head but I think they both have that they love winter and I think it's so fascinating and so cool especially as somebody who loves summer. I just love getting to see like how different we are. I think the differences between us are what make us us you know like it's really like unique and fascinating on my own i put a lot of time and i'm sure they did too i put a lot of time into finding ones that really resonate with me even like the last time i looked at it i think some of them no longer like resonated with me so i'm gonna like change those and and switch them out maybe you just remove them and i think that is so fun i'm also going to show you how to make fav icons like the little tiny thing on the tab little tiny icon i'm gonna show you super easy super simple but watching this video will save you a lot of time and having to like research on how to make every one of these you know and then um uh, blingies with a g i'm gonna show you how to make those i have one on my like uh my home page of my dog noodles that you just saw so i'm gonna show you how to make those which is really fun yeah just all around like so many so many fun little things i love this is my favorite part about websites honestly is making all these fun little things so yeah i hope that you enjoy and if you make any of them please eat email me your website or a picture or a screenshot or your buttons i want to see i really would love to see what you guys make it's so inspiring to see other people what they come up with and yeah i just i love i love everybody being so creative and expressing themselves you know i think it's beautiful anyways yeah i've been talking for eight minutes so let's get into the video <laughs> So the first way to do the website button, honestly, you could do it on any software that will allow you to make pixel art. The canvas size is 88 by 31. 
I used Microsoft Paint to make mine very user-friendly, very nostalgic, very early web. Um, this version looks very different than what I remember as a kid, but um, it's really cool because you, you can add text and they had like effects. So I think in the corner, you see there's like a gradient. I think that was like an effect I added. I can't really confirm that because my computer wasn't loading. Look at his little tongue. It's so stinky. He's my muse, so the tongue is on the, the website button. But if you do not have paint and you have an Apple device, you can use Pixel Studio. Again, like I said, you just have to make sure that the canvas is 88 by 31. What I really like about this software is when I made it on paint, I had to make three separate images and then edit them to make a GIF later in like a website that converts JPEGs to GIFs. But within Pixel Studio, it's an app on, on the iPhone. I don't know if it's on Android as well. You can just make the full animation within and you can make the canvas size however big you want. I don't think this app is very user friendly at all. It took me forever to figure it out, but I duplicated the slides and then I just changed the color of the star so that it kind of looked like something was happening. This button is so ugly. <laughs> Um, I would not use it. It was just kind of for demonstration purposes. The cool part about this is you only need like one to two, maybe three slides in your animation. And it just goes on repeat and it looks like you really did something, even though all I did was change the color of the stars. So for blinkies, these very first ones I put on my website, I honestly, all I did was use a pre-existing template and I change the text. I have a lot more like fun ones and more creative ones on my about me page, but I decided to leave those ones on the homepage. So I used blinkies.cafe to just edit the text. This is so simple and anybody can do it. I really think this is a cool idea, whoever came up with this website. They have all these templates you could pick from. There's a lot of new ones too, so I had a lot of fun like kind of going through these. I picked the Sakura Blossoms and then I just wrote Sakura Blossoms. I didn't know what to write, but I think it's really, really cute. You can add symbols and change the font, the scale, and you put generate. Oh, I, I thought it was really cool. They put not to hot link. Hot linking is the act of stealing someone's bandwidth by linking directly to their website assets such as images or videos. You have the image on your website through linking. Instead of downloading the image and then uploading it to your own site, it's like pretty annoying I think because all the downsides at the bottoms of hot linking so increased server cost, slow loading times, copyright infringement, lost traffic and revenue, just all around kind of rude to do. <laughs> so if you want to add a blinky to your website I recommend downloading it and then re-uploading it. Here is the finished up with a I think it's so cute it has like the little blossoms falling that is so stinking cute. You can also find um, already made blinkies on glitter slash graphics.com. I mean, you can really find them anywhere on the indie web, but this has like 340 something pages yeah. worth of blinkies, which is insane. Here's a twilight one I made on Pixel Studio. I'm so proud of this one. It makes me so happy every time I see it. The blinky ratio is 150 by 20. So it's the exact same concept as the website button, just a different ratio. And then to get the blinking border, I did like black and white little stripes uh, around the border. And then to make it blink, you'll duplicate the frame and then you will switch the colors. So all the black stripes will become white and all the white will become black and then it blinks. I'm hopefully I'm explaining this okay if not maybe you can kind of just look and see what I'm doing for the visual learners I find that the longer I go without skateboarding the worse my mental health so this is a nice little reminder to skateboard for my mental health <laughs> if you want to add a picture to your blinky I have a link on my favorites page then you go to the links and you go to the Adobe image resizer, you will have to log in and have like an Adobe account and just kind of mess with these settings. I think I ended up doing 100 pixels for the height and it became super duper tiny and blurry. You could probably get away with a little bit more, closer to 200 or whatever. You can play around with the sizes and then on Pixel Studio, I imported the image. 
at the bottom right there's like the little mountain with the plus you'll click that and then you can add it in and here i am just using the white pen and erasing the background so i could just get the bug if you resize the image to be a little bit bigger it won't be as pixelated but i really wanted that like super duper pixelated look and here i'm just kind of messing with the picture and stuff this is so funny to me i wish i would have left it like the way it looked but then i started adding like eye sparkles and, and stuff like that and then here i'm adding some text i just wrote it with my finger so it's not very clear that's one of the reasons i prefer microsoft paint because there's a text option this is so funny i honestly don't really like how it came out but for the purposes of this video that's fine i had it sparkles on a couple of the frames And then I went ahead and saved it as a GIF to my photos. You can also mess with the playback speed, I think, with the three pink lines. And here it is. Again, I'm sorry if I'm not explaining this very well. The next thing I am showing you how to do is the little fab icons. So again, on my favorites page, go to my links page, and then I have linked the website I use for fab icons, which is the little icons like on the tabs on top. You see there's a little TV screen for my links page and for my favorites page. There's a little Minecraft sword on my home page. They have so many cool ones you can choose from. You don't even have to really make one if, if you don't want something super specific. Like somebody might have already made one that you like. The Minecraft book was, was kind of cool. I thought that would be really funny to add as like my Bible verses page, you know? Because like, um, yeah, I don't know. I was just kind of looking at different Minecraft ones. I like the sword I have for my homepage. I want to add a Minecraft wolf on my page somewhere. I thought I had it, but I guess I don't. So I am saving the image to downloads. Oh, here I'm showing you the little bear. I made the bear fab icon to match the bear on the page. I think that's really fun and unique. In your import image, I imported the wolf, and it gives you a little preview, which is really, really cool. I'm just erasing the background here, making it transparent. I think that's really cool. That gives you that option, and the preview at the bottom is live. So as I erase more of it, becomes transparent. Very, very helpful then you download it and this is the code to add the fav icon so it shows up on your tab the next thing i am showing you how to do here is making a png transparent just kind of removing the background i'm using the app bazart and i just pressed remove background at the bottom honestly it's pretty amazing how well it works like separating the subject from the background is really really good at it and then i'm moving it to the left side of my screen because this is the free version of the app. So I saved it with the watermark and then I opened the app Superimpose. I put whatever for the background. Then for the foreground, I just crop out the... And you can save the image as a PNG and it'll have a transparent background and you can add it anywhere on your website and it's just like a floating little picture. To add text, I use the app Fonto and I downloaded these fonts. These are all the ones that come with it. It has like a billion options. And these are all my favorites. The animatic, I think that's how you pronounce it. Very 2010s Arial for like your classic um, like screen cap edit. <laughs> I used to have a Katy Perry fan page when I was, I don't know, in like 5th, 6th, 7th grade and I made a lot of edits so that's why I'm the most comfortable making edits on my phone. I'm very like comfortable with these apps. I've been using Fonto for like 12 years at this point and I added the stroke to the back because it reminds me of the Windows Movie Maker of the 2000s. Like, you really didn't have many text options. 
to download fonts i use the website defont.com again i've been using this one for over 10 years and you press download and then you open up the zip file this one has like a cover image the font and then there's a little thank you it tells you not to sell or redistribute the font then i open it in fonto and i install it And boom, now it's in my downloaded fonts. With the Microsoft Sans, I also downloaded that because that is the old Windows Movie Maker font. I miss simpler times. <laughs> and here I'm just showing you that on the app Superimpose, you can change the background, you can change the background color. Superimpose, I do think is a couple of dollars, but it's so worth it. Somebody had asked me about Pixar. I think I've tried using it before, but I did not like it at all. Like, Superimpose is my baby. Oh, here I'm showing you how to use this website to make a pixel speech PNG. I also used to use this on my Katy Perry fan page. I think I would use it to make a watermark. <laughs> Last but not least, I am teaching you how to make a blingy. They are these sparkly little gifts from the MySpace era. The Blingy website is up, but you can't use it. So I use PicMix. I have been low-key gatekeeping this for <laughs> several years now, um, but no longer. I want us all to make fun, sparkly gifts. Here I'm just kind of showing you an example. I'm just whipping something up together. When you download the PicMix, it will have a watermark unless you pay, I think it's like $5 a month or something. I think it's worth it because I don't see anything wrong with the logo, but because Blingy shut down, I do not want PicMix to shut down. So I'm like, you know, if I'm able to support the website being up, I will. I've used this for years and I hope it stays for years. Oh, I couldn't find a good taco that I liked. <laughs> um... But yeah, I really, really like this website. I think it's really awesome. Here are some that I've made over the years for my Twilight page, for my Love Story with Yamada-kun page, the Sods one. I don't even know what a Sods mean, but um, I really like that one. And then these are some buttons I made for my shops, the one for my homepage, my Paracus page. The girl one, I think I used it in a Nihai Converse outfits video. These are from 2023, that's already two years ago, that's crazy. Some Twilight ones, 2022, first one I ever made, not enough. I think that was for another YouTube video, I had it like in the background. Oh here, I'm trying to see how I can edit it. I don't like that the frame is like slightly off center, like it bothers me, but I really do like this one and I wish I could remove the watermark as well, so that's a little annoying that I can't go back and edit it. Oh, here I'm showing you how I add Blingy. Literally, I just looked up Blingy and I put the logo for a whole different website for the sake of nostalgia. Is that crazy? Maybe. See you later, Brovist.